I'm going to be rating every single card that has been banned in Commander as of August 2023. A few things to keep in mind. Commander is run by the Rules Committee, not Wizards of the Coast. They do not ban cards based on data. Many of these cards are banned because of the play patterns they create, not power level, supposedly. According to their philosophy, the Rules Committee does not ban on power level alone, although I would argue some of them are definitely banned on power level alone. I'm also going to ignore the conspiracy cards and dexterity cards, or any card that is banned for non-gameplay reasons. Now I have a very different philosophy when it comes to banning. If a card or combo is illegal in the format and not causing any issues, then anything weaker than that for the most part should be fine. Cards like Necropotence and Underworld Breach are some of the most powerful cards by themselves. So if a card is not as powerful as Necropotence, then it's probably fine. As for combos, the best one right now is Thassa's Oracle and Demonic Consultation, and honestly, I'd kinda prefer to see it go just cause I'm sick and tired of Oracle. But anything that's a weaker combo than that, meaning it requires more pieces, more mana, is just less consistent in some way, is probably fine for the format, because there are a lot of combos that are worse than Thassa's Oracle, but still powerful and see some play, but they're not broken. Currently, other than maybe Thassa's Oracle, Doxad Extortionist is the only card that I think needs to be banned. It's probably too powerful on an individual level and too game warping. So if a card is significantly less powerful than Doxide, I'm not super concerned about it being unbanned. I also don't believe in signpost bans, which the rules committee does like to do. Signpost bans are essentially cards that they banned just to indicate to players that you might not want to play a card that is similar to this. I think those are ridiculous. If you ban a random land destruction card, does that actually stop anyone from playing Cataclysm and Winter Orb? If they were going to play those cards, they were going to do it anyway. <laughs> so I don't really like signpost bans, it just fluffs out the ban list needlessly. Alright, enough prelude, let's actually start. I'll start with the coldest takes and we'll try to get progressively hotter as the video goes along. It wouldn't be a Trinket Mage video if I didn't have some controversial hot take that gets people to yell at me in the comments. Alright, let's start with Black Lotus. I mean, what can I say? It's the best card ever printed, obscenely powerful fast mana giving you 3 mana for 0. It's so broken, so absolutely busted, I would not want it in the format. It's just too much mana too quickly, but I don't need to sell you on how good you know, Black Lotus is. In the same vein, the five boxen. I think we have plenty of fast mana in the format and just don't need more. Plus, these are really expensive reserveless pieces. It would be awful. Ancestral Recall is one blue draw three, which is utterly ridiculous. It's just way too good. And to round off the power nine, time block. Two mana to take an extra turn is really way too cheap. It's nuts how good this card is. And it doesn't exile itself, so you can loop it really easily. Too strong for commander. Time Vault is a funky, funky artifact that enters tapped and doesn't untap normally, but it taps to take an extra turn, and you can skip a turn to untap it. Or if you play a card like Voltaic Key, you can just take infinite turns very easily. This would be a two card colorless combo that just takes infinite turns, and you have things like Urza's Saga to tutor up the Voltaic Key really easily. It'd be a crazy strong combo probably too good for commander. Gifts Ungiven is an interesting tutor. It lets you search for up to four cards, and then two of them go to your graveyard and two of them go to hand of an opponent's choice. It is neat that you can just choose two cards and put two into the graveyard. Really fun with their reanimation target and unburial rights. Honestly, the card is very similar to Intuition. It has a lot of the same political elements, but Gifts Ungiven is not on the reserve list. So it would be an affordable alternative to Intuition. I think the card would be really powerful, but it would be totally fine for the format. And I would love to see Gifts Ungiven. Emrakul is one of the big bads of Magic. This 15 mana card is one of the be all end all biggest baddest creatures in the game. And I have no clue why it's banned. Like, yes, I understand it like takes an extra turn, it has Annihilator 6 and it just destroys some random player, but like, it's also 15 mana. 
I mean, at that point, if I put 15 mana into a Genesis wave, I probably win the game on the spot. Or if I put 15 mana into a Torment of Hailfire, I also just pretty much win the game on the spot. And then for less mana, I can just cast Omniscience, which then lets me cast everything. It's just so much mana, at that point you just win the game for less mana. So why is this banned? And don't tell me, oh, you'll put it in the command zone. Like, so? You'll lose before you have enough mana to cast the Ember Quill. You're in colorless. You have nothing to protect yourself against other people casting Genesis waves and omnisciences. Like, you're just gonna get destroyed with this new command zone. And it just, it hurts one player pretty bad, I guess. But does it? Like, by the time you have 15 mana, they might have six permanents to sacrifice and be fine. I don't know, this card's not that good, and it's not as unkillable as you think it is. Yeah, it's got protection from spells with colors in them, but board wipes that just destroy all get around that, because they don't do damage, so your Wrath of God and Damnation, which are common commander cards, just kill this thing. Sundering Titan. I love playing this in Modern, and would probably not bother with it in Commander. It's just not that good of a card. Like, yeah, it blows up lands of types. Sure, cool, I guess. And I know you can reanimate it or blink it or whatever, but you can do that with Terastodon. And Terastodon is actually better, too, because it destroys any three lands, right? Yeah, I know this can destroy up to five, but it doesn't destroy Command Tower or the Battle Bond lands or the Pain lands or a lot of lands that are popular in Commander. It has to hit things with types. It's just probably worse early game land destruction than Terastodon. Now, Sylvan Primordial is better Terastodon because when you reanimate this early, you get three forests. So not only do you set your opponents back, but you get way ahead on mana. I've tested with the Sylvan Primordial before in Commander to see how good it is, and it's just really good. This card is nuts. Biorhythm is a strange sorcery. It sets everyone's life total to the number of creatures they have. So, like, what's the best thing you can do with this? Cyclonic Rift, and then untap, cast it with a creature in play, and you're like, haha, I win. Is that even that scary? Like, that's kind of fine. It's an 8 drop. So, let's say you just cast Bio them by itself. Then people have, what, 3, 4 creatures in play, everyone's life total gets really low? Isn't that kind of fun and exciting to just set everyone's life total really low and then swing in with combat damage? That's kind of how you want games to end anyway, right? I don't know, I, it's just, it's 8 mana. It should close out a game or get close to it for that mana cost. I think this card's totally fine. Flash is one of the more recent bands, and it is so good. This card is so absurdly powerful because of Protean Hulk. Like, if you played it fairly, which I don't think anyone has ever done in the history of the game, it just gives a creature flash. But with Hulk, it puts the Hulk into play and then sacrifices it for two mana, and then you just combo off and win. It was just like one of the best ways to win the game, and it led to some really unfun play patterns of somebody trying to flash and somebody countering it, and then someone else flashing in response, and then somebody trying to do that. And it was just this game of chicken where nobody wanted to cast their flash because someone else would just flash on top of it and win at instant speed. Speaking of unfun play patterns, Shaharazad is not a good card, but it would be awful for the game. It makes you play a sub game. So you take what's left of your deck and play another game. And then the loser of the sub game, when you get back to the main game, loses half their life total. This sucks because it takes so long. It literally doubles the time of a game because you're playing two games, but you can copy it. You can sub game within your sub game. You can already do stuff like scramble verse plus copy it to just cause the game to go so long people will just concede and leave. I talked about that in my Chaos Decks video right here if you want to check that out. And Shaharazad is just a cheaper scramble verse at doing the same thing, just wasting everyone's time. This card's awful, it's also a rules nightmare with some other weird stuff. I would never want to see this card. So Way of the Stars is similar. It kinda resets the game, except it's gonna take a long time before you can actually like play stuff to attack with. Unlike Worldfire, which was a somewhat recent unban, one damage is actually kind of easy to do if your deck is built around it. Seven in blue is kind of awkward, and it's just, I don't see it adding anything good to the game. Trade Secrets is a weird card. One of the few cards I would actually consider unfun. I really don't like calling anything in the game unfun because fun is subjective, but playing against Trade Secrets feels awful. Here's how it goes. I have trade secrets. I go, hey, Timmy, would you like to draw 20 magic cards? And then they say yes. So then I draw 40 and they draw 20. 
and then the other two players are just way behind. We get to sculpt and craft perfect hands and try and go for a win, and the other two players just do nothing. It leads to some awful, dumb play patterns that just sucked. Trade secrets absolutely should not be unbanned. Here's a bit of a contentious one. Hole Breacher. Look, I know, I know, people are like, oh, Hole Breacher this, Hole Breacher that. I get it. Hole Breacher plus a wheel was a CDH level combo. It's a very powerful thing. Just like Fossa's Oracle and Demonic Consultation. But here's the difference. To me, players don't have a consultation themed deck, but they do have a wheel themed deck. So, when they see a wheel card get printed or something that has synergy with a wheel deck, they go, oh, I'll put it in my deck. Not realizing that they're playing a very high level combo at casual tables. Like if Gilded Drake got printed at common was a dollar, it would get banned instantly because Timmy's would go, oh, I have a blink deck. This is a powerful blink card. I'll put it in my deck. And then the rules committee would say, commander is about playing your commander and it steals your commander too easily, blah, 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 blah. The only reason it doesn't get banned is because it's an expensive reserve list card. Nobody's cracking it from packs and, and just jamming it in their random commander decks. Also, for people who are like, oh, but Breacher doesn't end the game like Thassa's Oracle does. Yes, it does. Look, if I go Breacher wheel and I draw seven, you draw zero, lose your whole hand and I get 21 treasures, you can concede. The game's over. I've won. Yeah, it's gonna take a couple of turns probably, but like, you lose. It's not like a modern tournament where you have to wait for the Storm player to combo off entirely because they have a 1% chance of fizzling. Just go to the next game, it's casual commander, chill out. All right, this next one I think shows how poorly the RC handles the ban list, more than most. Panoptic Mirror. Oh my god, this card is so bad, but it's fun and cool, which makes it one of the worst things to have on the ban list. Look, you spend mana to imprint a card underneath it, and then on every upkeep, you cast it. So the thing that people are scared of is you spend five mana to cast this, five mana to tap it to put time warp underneath it, and then on your next upkeep, you get to cast time warp for free and you take infinite turns. So that's two cards, 10 mana, and the combo is sorcery speed because you have to wait a full turn cycle, which means sorcery speed removal could stop the combo. This sucks. This isn't a good combo. <laughs> like there are so many things you can do for less than 10 mana, two cards that just win the game on the spot. This is not a powerful thing, but it would be fun to have. Imagine putting a chaos warp under this and then spinning a random card every single turn. You like just keep chaos warping your own stuff. That could be fun. It leads to some weird, interesting, like deck building decisions and what you put under it. It would be awesome for Commander. And because of that, I really want it unbanned. All right, let's go through a few ones that I think are pretty obvious. Channel should stay banned. Let's you pay a life to get a mana. You can get like 30 plus mana really easily. This card's ridiculous. Fast Bond is very similar. Let's you pay a life to get an extra land drop, which is insane. You can dump all your lands into play super early. And if you ever have like a fetch land and a crucible effect, you can just fetch up every land in your deck. Gristlebrand, now come on. This is like the be all end all, most format defining reanimation target. It would basically win the game by itself as soon as it comes into play. It's so good in every single reanimation deck would always get it first. And since he's in black, even if you're in a multicolor reanimation deck, there's no more decisions to be made. If you're in Demir, you might go, oh, maybe I'll reanimate Jinkataxis or something. But nope, Crystal Brand's in black, which most reanimator decks are black. You would always get this one. It's just the best one. This demon should stay locked away. Yagmoth's Bargain is an upgrade on Necropotence. Yeah, I know it's three more mana, but it draws you the cards immediately, which is crazy strong. Upheaval is an absolutely crazy card. It bounces everything, including lands. And if you've ever played with this card, it's way more powerful than it reads because you can play it on your turn and then play your land drop and then float some mana beforehand so you get to play some mana rocks and it just gives you such an obscene amount of tempo. It's so good. Talarian Academy, the blue Gaia's Cradle. Except artifacts are way easier to put into play than creatures, so it's just better. This card is really strong and should stay banned. Caracas is another funny land. It comes into play untapped, taps for a color, and can bounce a legendary creature, which makes it an 
auto include in any deck with white in it and i think these types of auto includes are just not healthy for the format it's too easy to splash in a deck and is also pretty powerful library of alexandria is a weird land you might have not heard of well i hope you've heard of the real one you know a true tragedy but in magic it's a land that enters untapped taps for a colorless and can tap to draw a card if you have a full grip of seven this card is just too much of an auto include as well it's just you can put it in basically any deck as an untapped land that taps for mana and has a pretty powerful upside it's really good prophet of crufix is a buffed version of seaborn muse and seaborn muse is good enough to see play in cdh which means prophet is probably still too strong it really just lets the player who has profit take over the game and it's almost impossible to come back from tinker is an absolutely absurd card imagine this as a curve island mana crypt cast tinker sack the mana crypt put bolus's citadel in play proceed to win the game it's just too good coalition victory this one is an obvious unban i think like come on it requires you to have all the land types in play and all the colors on creatures and i know you can achieve that by having a triome and a dual land and one five color creature in play but for starters i do not see a scenario where you have just a triome and a dual land and one five color creature in play i don't know how you got exactly all three of those in play and then also had enough mana to cast coalition victory it's it's not something you can rush into that quickly and if your alternate win con can be stopped by a path to exile or a ghost quarter on your triome then it doesn't seem like a very good alternative win con but it is a funny goofy commander card that should be unbanned okay recurring nightmare is kind of a weird card i'm a little iffy on it so it lets you like loop a creature a bunch if you have the mana so you can recur etb or death triggers this card's fine i think just like any other reanimation strategy it's strong until you have graveyard hate or exile based removal i'm not sure what makes this card so good to be banned but it is kind of boring so i'm not like upset that it's banned i'm kind of lukewarm on it leovold is similar to holebreaker except better it's just a more powerful card and has another effect and is a lot more consistent because he sits in your command zone so although i think holebreaker since it's another piece you have to find is fine leovold being already in your command zone just makes it so much stronger you should probably stay banned braids is a maybe for me like it's a pretty powerful stacks commander but you're limited to mono black so is it that powerful mono black stacks is kind of on the weak side and there were other good stacks commanders already in the format <sighs> maybe i haven't played with braids enough to really know how good the card is seems kind of inconsistent in terms of power level. Ruffalo's is another card I'm a little iffy on whether or not it should be banned. Probably one of the best mono green ramp commanders that has ever been printed, but you are locked into mono green, which is a bit of a downside. And I've tested with this card before and it didn't seem that good. Like it was strong. I don't know. The tests were pretty limited though when we were just trying them out for fun. I'll put them in maybe for now. I could be convinced either way, to be honest. Limited resources and balance are both really interesting build around stacks cards i think they would be powerful but not really more powerful than armageddon or cataclysm and it would be totally fine for the format they require you to do some interesting deck building or setup to make them actually powerful and i think they would be super fun interesting cards for any stacks player like me if you want to hear me go on and on more about how much i love stacks check out my stacks video here iona is totally fine look I know it can theoretically lock a player out of a game if they're monocolored and nobody ever casts a board wipe. It's like a decent reanimation target to lock out a specific player, although does it lock someone out more than obliterate? I don't know, not really. I don't think anyone's gonna quit the game after seeing Iona once, despite what the rules committee might say. I know they're afraid of Painter's Servant, but that combo is so much mana and just so much worse than other combos, like it's just not that strong. Blue Tree is an interesting one. So as a card, it's just a legendary dual caster mage. It's definitely not broken. But it is banned because as a companion, because it's your 101st card, it would go in every single deck that had blue and red in its color identity for free. Look, I know the rules can be changed the rules so that companion will work in EDH, probably on behalf of wizards, 
so they could sell packs when Ikoria was in standard. But look, Ikoria is not in print anymore. You don't need Companion to sell more packs, and Companion is very unlikely to come back considering it is one of the worst mechanics of all time. Just change the rules back so Companions don't work in Commander. Nobody's gonna care. Very few people actually use a Companion. And then we can unban Lutri, and people like Lutri. Let the otter swim free. Ereo is another stacks commander that I think is kind of neat because it requires some interesting deck building decisions. I think it's pretty powerful, but not stronger than some of the other stacks we have, and definitely not ban worthy. All right, I've saved the hottest, spiciest takes for last. Golos is kind of a maybe for me. When the rules committee banned Golos, he was one of the most popular commanders ever, which is kind of crazy that they just axed him. Now, I understand that Golos is kind of boring. It's sort of generically just really powerful no matter what you do. It just casts things for free, which is always good. And Ramsey, which is always good. My problem was Golos was one of the only, like, dedicated land commanders for five colors because it put a specific land into play, so you could really build your deck around some cool, funky land. I guess I don't want Golos unbanned, I more want a dedicated 5 color lands commander to be printed. Something similar to Golos, but not as generically powerful. Alright, prime time. Honestly, not a clue why it's banned. It's card 6 mana, like come on. It's good, and like a lot of the green decks that lean into lands and lean into green, which is many of them, would play it. And I know the rules committee said that Primeval Titan comes down and the whole game revolves around stealing it and blinking it and cloning it. Yeah, same with Dockside. Like, come on, Dockside is just a two mana prime time. And whenever somebody casts Dockside and gets their combo countered, then every other player is like, oh, how can I clone the Dockside? How can I blink my clone to get more mana from Dockside? And blah, blah, blah. The whole game revolves around it. I really hate Dockside if you can't tell. But Primetime is a 6 mana worse dock side that has land synergies. It's a lot more fun and a lot more interesting and a lot more fair. I would love to see Primetime let into the format. I've been saving this one for last, as I know I'm gonna get flack for it, but I think Paradox Engine is actually fine. Like, it would be good, don't get me wrong. It's a powerful card, I, I promise you that but it was banned because people are not good at building decks. I'm sorry, someone's gotta say it, but like, I'm telling you, the arguments for this card baffle me, absolutely baffle me. The RC says it inserts into any deck. Huh? What are you talking about? <laughs> there are many decks that do not want a Paradox Engine. Heck, look at CDH decks from the past, like, even some of the most powerful five color builds didn't play the card. There was just other things to do. If you were playing a heavily green land ramp based deck, which is already considered to be the most powerful type of ramp, then you probably didn't want Paradox Engine because you didn't run as many rocks or mana dorks. So it punished the decks that play this green land ramp, which is considered to be the strongest, which is a good thing that we're powering up the other styles of ramp. You need a critical mass of mana dorks and rocks to make this card good. Having just two or three mana rocks in play isn't going to win you the game, especially not in any deck. Thinking that you just need mana rocks and dorks for this card to be good is way off base. Go to any like Reddit post or podcast talking about the card and people will be complaining that Paradox Engine makes games go super long, and that every turn takes forever, and they're just tapping and untapping and drawing, and then passing the turn, and then getting back to their turn again with the Paradox Engine still in play, because nobody plays Artifact Removal, and then doing the same thing again. And that's because their deck wasn't built around Paradox Engine. They would just have Mana Rocks and go, well, this is kind of good, I guess, and then they wouldn't do anything with it. To make the card actually powerful, you need a critical mass of cantrips, which most casual decks do not play cantrips, tutors, which many casual decks also do not play tutors, and combo finishers, which many casual decks do not play. I played a lot of Paradox Engine in CDH when it was legal, and when the card comes down, it ended the game, because you would set up for a few turns with mana rocks and stuff, hold up your counter magic, play your big 5 drop, which was somewhat tough to do in CDH, and then your cantrips, which 
are, I cannot stress enough, really don't see that much play outside of CDH, would go plus on mana and were card neutral. Because of that, you were able to churn through your entire deck very easily, very quickly, and as soon as you hit two tutors, you just won the game, because you would get Isochron Scepter and like Lightning Bolt, probably. It does not make the game take forever, it is just a normal storm turn that pretty much ends the game. And not only is it fine for those aspects, but man, is it fun to brew around. This is like what Commanders 4 is brewing interesting decks. People played Sisse Storm. That's Green White Storm, or Zyri and Storm, Jund Storm, come on. It was a colorless storm engine, and with Aetherflux Reservoir being a colorless storm finisher, means any color combination could now be a storm deck if you just took the time to brew around it. That type of creativity and deck building is awesome, but without the engine, storm is relegated to blue and red for the most part. I know there's some other fringe ways you can do it in a few different colors, but it's mostly blue and red, let's be real. So I adore Paradox Engine, and I wholeheartedly disagree that it was that easy to slot into any random deck. Because if you weren't winning the game with Paradox Engine, you were probably doing it wrong. And if Paradox Engine was making it multiple turn cycles, that just means your playgroup didn't play enough removal. Because that card should have been removed if you didn't win with it or even removed after the first trigger of its ability. All right, this was a pretty long vid, so let me know if you have any differing opinions about any of these cards. I'm sure I'll hear about Paradox Engine in the comments. I'm most curious about everything in the maybe section because honestly, that's what I'm most iffy about, and I'm super curious what other people think. Thank you so very much for watching. Subscribe for more.